The Dolphins went all in this offseason. Miami went out of their way to trade a huge package for Tyreek Hill to pair him up with Jalen Waddle to bolster the roster and answer one big question. Is Tua Tungavailoa good enough? So far, so good. The now Mike McDaniel-led Dolphins are 2-0 and it's come in absolute insane fashion, especially after week two. That was just wild. The Dolphins were dead in the water, pun intended, down 28-7 at the half to the Ravens, but damn, it wasn't over just yet. In the third quarter, Baltimore went back up 21 points, 35-14 to end the third quarter. The fourth quarter, however, was a massacre. Miami started the period by capturing a 7-play, 75-yard drive with a touchdown. The Ravens didn't convert a fourth down. In the next drive, Tua hit Tyreek for a 48-yard touchdown. The Ravens punted, and then the Dolphins had another touchdown to Tyreek again, 60 yards to tie the game. Pure craziness. But it looked like Baltimore was still going to pull through by hitting a field goal to go up 38-35 with a little over two minutes left in the game. Miami got the ball, and well, Tua led the ball downfield and hit Jalen Waddle in the end zone. 42-38, the Dolphins won in the most bizarre way. Tua threw the ball a lot. 50 passes, 36 of them were completed for 469 yards, 6 touchdowns, and 2 interceptions. More importantly, the wide receivers looked incredible. Nobody did too much other than Tyreek and Waddle, but nobody really cares because that's why you have them. Tyreek looked explosive as hell and had 11 receptions for 190 yards and 2 touchdowns. Waddle had almost the same exact wild stat line, 11 receptions, 120. 71 yards and two touchdowns, including that game winner. The rushing game was eh at best, and the defense had its early struggles trying to stop Lamar Jackson, but they responded when it mattered most. Miami did what they had to do to win and start 2-0 because of it. The good news? Tua looked really good in week one too and he usually has against New England. Tua is actually 4-0 against the Patriots, which is wild, and he played well, completing 23 of 33 passes for 270 yards and a touchdown. Certainly not anywhere close to the line he put up against Baltimore, but he didn't need to do as much against New England. It was also pretty clear that the Dolphins didn't want him to do too much. Miami just wanted to play to his strengths. You have to give Mike McDaniel credit where it's due. He was using a lot of bootlegs in play action, playing to to his strengths. He wasn't necessarily stretching it down the field or doing anything crazy. Instead, he was getting it to Tyreek and Waddle and letting them do their thing, which is exactly what he should be doing. Even from the first play, it looked like Tua already had that chemistry, and as we all know, Tyreek is practically unguardable. The biggest play of that game was just a short slant to Waddle over the middle that he took all the way to the house. Of course, it was kind of hard to get a read of whether or not Miami was actually good in week one. They beat a Patriots team whose offense was literally non-existent, 20-7. But after week two, I think it's safe to say that we have a good idea that the Dolphins are definitely for real. This isn't the same Dolphins team from years past, and there are so many reasons for that. But we have to start with the main one. Tyreek Hill. A lot of hope that a guy like Tyreek was what the Dolphins offense needed. We got to see that explosiveness of Jalen Waddle come out last year, and that was great. But couple that with Tyreek, and you have one fast-ass receiving core. Tua had already shown some promise here and there, but there was clearly the idea if the Dolphins put some stud weapons around him, they'd be able to see if he was the guy. And he's looked great in two weeks. It can't be understated how much Tyreek changes this offense. Defenses have to pay more attention to him and keep safeties deeper down the field. And once he does get the ball, he's going to make plays, and you know that. Tyreek had already well proved himself in Kansas City. He's had over 1,200 yards in each of the last two years and has gone for over 1,000 yards four times in his six-year tenure. The Chiefs are going to be fine without him. I mean, they have Patrick Mahomes. But Tua is not Mahomes, and that makes Tyreek even more valuable, especially if you couple him with a guy like Jalen Waddle. Waddle isn't new, especially not to Tua. That's why the Dolphins drafted him, literally to couple him up with his old teammate at Bama. 
Waddle was a dude that was really good and was really exciting last year, but you knew he could just continue to explode into an elite player, and he's already well on his way to doing so. It's only been two games, and he has almost a quarter of the yards he had as a rookie, which, by the way, was just over a thousand yards in 16 games. He's a stud, and he's showing why Miami wanted him, and it's a hell of a lot easier when defenses are paying attention to Tyreek Hill. Tua is obviously the guy that has benefited the most from that Tyreek trade, but Waddle is a close second. That being said, this is a new Tua. We haven't seen any kind of level of Tua like this since he's been in the pros. This is what Miami had hoped he could be. This is exactly what Tua showed he could potentially turn into his second to last year at Alabama. Already this season, Tua has thrown seven touchdowns. In his rookie year, in 10 games, he only threw 11. Even last season, Tua only threw 16 in 13 games. He had averaged just over a touchdown down per game in his first two years in the pro, and this year, he's averaging three and a half through the first two weeks of 2022. And it's not just that. Just about every single stat is seeing a huge boost. His average completion was 6.3 yards as a rookie, and improved to 6.8 last season. Through two games this year, it's 8.2. This was a make or break year for him. If Tua didn't show that he was that guy, it's very possible that Miami was going to look elsewhere. You have to remember that the other guys that were compared to him in that 2020 class were Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert. Burrow played in a Super Bowl literally seven months ago, and Herbert has already proven he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Tua is well behind the curve on that, but he's starting to make some noise. Most of the credit goes to Tyreek Hill for completely switching the Dolphins' offense, and that's fair. It's warranted, but it's also pretty damn obvious that the Dolphins' offense doesn't even run the same that it did. Brian Flores was Tua's head coach for his first two seasons, and looking at that offense, it's clear that it was never built to play to his strengths. Remember when Ryan Fitzpatrick came in when Tua got hurt? That looked like a Fitzpatrick offense, not an offense made around a mobile type, left-handed quarterback that thrives off of short routes and good decisions, not necessarily throwing that bitch deep every play. That's where Mike McDaniel comes in. McDaniel is an offensive mastermind, as everyone calls him. And yes, he's weird as hell, but how can you not love him? He came over from the 49ers after he spent the last five years under Kyle Shanahan, and he was even with him in Atlanta. McDaniel was supposed to come in and make Tua a viable quarterback, and he's figured it out so far. There's still a long way to go in the McDaniel era in Miami but how good can they be for real? I don't think anyone in their right mind thinks that the Dolphins can win the AFC East. And don't get me wrong, that's not even a shot at Miami. Just everyone seriously thinks that the Bills are the best team in football by a ton. And that's probably true. The Patriots and Jets are both 1-1 one one to start the season, and I'd say there are still a lot of questions there. Right now, I'd easily take the Dolphins to finish second in that division. And I think Miami has already earned that belief. But the question is whether or not the Dolphins are going to be good enough to get a wild card. Miami finished 9-8 and eight last season, and 10 and 6 in 2020. Miami has been right on the cusp of the postseason, and things have either just fallen apart or not gone their way. And with an offense built around Tua, created by Mike McDaniel, with two elite weapons like Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle, this should be the year Miami makes a run because the Dolphins are scary good.